and test out. Yeah, ho. Oh. Wanna go to the heads? Ho. Oh. Oh. Huh? Map it. Get in. Get in. Get in here. Hello, welcome to Working Horses with Jim. Today we have Earl and Baron hitched up to the sled and we are taking some more perennials down to the pond on the other side of the field. See this? It's not quite ready to plant yet. Um, we'll get these loaded up. I'll get to work. I'm going to put these. All set? Yeah. Test that. Load it up. Ready to go down. I did uh, pot some perennials up to sell, and I may do a few more or give away, but um, I just need to move some somewhere else. That's why we're doing this. Well, it's definitely wetter than yesterday, isn't it? Yeah. Really wet. Did some exercise out while they both did. So I do have a question here from Bombardier Parts. And they asked, do you think that you may try Baron in any of the horse poles this summer? So my answer to that is yes, absolutely. We hope to pull Baron with Bill a little bit at the horse poles. We don't have too many horse poles that we're planning on going to. But yes, those are the two that we'll be pulling this summer. We have no intentions of pulling 
Duke and Earl at any horse pull this summer, or who knows even if we'll do it next summer. But for Baron, yes, we'd like to try him at the horse pull and see how he does. Well, folks, as you can see, once again, like I showed in an earlier video, the tile is not at all taking all the water that's pouring out of the woods there. And it's running right down across the field. I talked to the tile guys a while ago and they said there are times when you have this much water coming out of the woods into a field that the tile cannot take it all. But it's just a once in a while type of thing. As you can see also, I have a bunch of hay here that's getting caught on my runner. And for some reason, it's not popping out over the top of it. And I'm not quite sure why. But it should eventually pop off, I think. I cast out. So it, it jumped off. It, piece of hay, a bunch of hay is gone now. tend are kind of shoving together a little bit more than I like that's for sure um, I noticed that one other time when I had these two hitched this way they tend to push on each other um, so I'm going to adjust my lines so that it possibly will spread them out a little bit because of that um, they're getting a little bit worked up and uh, if I could get them to spread apart from each other they would stay calmer I am sure So what I'm doing is going two holes in on the lines and that will put, spread them out far, that will put this line a, a, um, a little bit farther distance away. So by adjusting the lines like I did, for a little while, the horses will probably walk with the heads kind of turned off to the outside, but eventually over time, it will, you know, kind of force them to spread out a little bit from each other. 
so that they're not bumping into each other, which they have been bumping into each other the whole way down here, and they still are. And so it's just a matter of time and getting them used to the fact that they need to, eat to spread out a little bit. This sled pulls a little bit hard um, today in the mud. So it's getting them a little bit worked up because of that. We have a lot of water right now. Is the gate open? As, as you can see, our pond is right full to running over. Just two days ago, no, yesterday, we were just out here and Brenda was wondering, wondering why the pond is so, so low. And I look at it now, it's full and running over. Yep. So those are the flowers from the other day. From yesterday, we dropped off. And so she's gonna put these out here and then she's gonna come out another time and plant them all into the section over there. Gotta make sure it's far enough out of the way. I don't know when you're, when you're coming back, but I, I can, gotta make sure there's enough room for me to get by if I want to come back. Even as much energy as these horses have, I've been pleased with how well they have stood here when we were in the garden loading up. It was stood so nicely. And now, of course, it's not surprising because they're tired from dragging this heavy sled down the field. But back in the garden, they were fresh. And they still stood good. So they're coming along pretty nicely, I must say. These are good boys. Is there any food for deer in this bunch of flowers? I don't think so. I know we, I want to keep those. I accidentally brought that on. That's Menarda. Let's keep that. We've got some water right here. We can wash our hands. I don't want to get dirty though. No. Thank you. I kept up. So another question we had from a viewer is, are there days when the horses just don't listen or just don't feel like working? And the answer to that is yes. You gotta consider these young horses as teenage boys or girls. Um, and they are most definitely that way. But as parents and or as the, the teamster working these horses, you have to figure out a way to overcome that uh, rebellion, I guess you could call it, and make them do what needs to be done. Um, and there's just numerous different ways to go about it, but uh, the answer to your question is absolutely there are days when they just don't want to work and they just don't listen that well so 
Um, that's just the way it is with animals. It's not like you can just jump on a tractor and go. You've got to deal with their differences, you know, on an everyday. I sure have been enjoying that way you've made. I call it a way. I'm giving it a name. Maybe the pasture way. And it's really nice to walk out through there. Really enjoying it a lot. Glad you like it. I do. I've kept that. I think a lot of people would love to see me work in the, the colts more together. You know, either Duke and Earl together or Baron and Earl together, Baron and Duke, whatever combination. Um, but I don't think a lot of you guys realize how, I, I like to hitch them up together some, um, but how much faster the process of having a really good pair of, really good horses, how much faster of a process it is if you've got an experienced horse helping you do the training. Baron is a four year old and he's doing great when he's with Bill, when he's with Ken, he can do anything. But when he's with the younger ones, Duke and Earl, um, he does okay. But it just doesn't take much to stop him from being uh, a really, really good horse with them because, I don't know, I think, I think they distract him really easily. And so they don't always work quite as good as when he's with an older horse. It's the same with, with Duke and Earl. They are just going to progress so much faster if they can continue working with Ken for a little while longer. Um, even though they will be working with, with Baron quite a lot, they need to kind of go back back and work with Ken even after they work with, with Earl, uh, even after they work with Baron for a while. It's just really good to go back and hitch them up with, with Ken. And even this summer, I wouldn't be surprised if I have some logging jobs to do that are fairly easy, that I'll take um, Duke and or Earl and hitch them with Bill in the woods to start getting that logging ability. Um, you know, I know when I asked Bill to go, if Duke or Earl hesitate, or if they, in their mind, can't pull a load, Bill will do it, and he'll kind of make them come along. Whereas with Baron, he's so much more mature and more experienced than they are, it'd be so easy for him to just to quit if the younger ones didn't want to go. So um, it's just one of those things. It's, it's, people don't realize how important it is, and how much faster it is to do the process when you got a good old horse to do a lot of the help with a lot of the training. And don't get me wrong, you need more than just the horse. You need to be as a driver, the trainer, but still you can utilize, take advantage of an older horse so much. So that's our video for today, guys. Hope you have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow.